we have got 22 selfies uploaded and uh, three posters designed. So those who are still uh, waiting for the you know good time to load your selfie, you can do that. The, you can load it till 4 p.m. tomorrow, and uh, it can be about anything. You can you know while the speaker is talking, you come and take a selfie. You know if if you are if you are confident enough about that. So you know it should be funny. It should be you know uh, engaging. It should be different. Um, and we will break for about 45 minutes, then the session continues. One uh, request would be give feedbacks. And what we have done is we will not be seeking written feedback from you. That you can send an email later. Outside the hall, there are forms. There are op open you know, feedback forms. Go and write whatever you want. Use it. Give the feedback. You know, let the speakers know how they performed how good they were or how bad they were. Just go and give the feedback. It's right uh, outside the door. And, and tomorrow, Apple Store as of June 2014, and a little higher on Google Play. So which means that there are a lot of apps. Now, why are we discussing all these? When we look at the challenge that is involved with the testing team, we see that uh, there are, uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but what it all says is you would need to perform your testing on around 400 devices for you to get 90% confidence that your app is going to work on, uh, on the devices globally. Because people in China are using a different set of mobile, people in India are using a different set of mobile, and so on. There are various operating system resolution, and these many factors play a very important role. And uh, it's quite impossible for us to test it on 400 devices, isn't it? So we have been do, uh, doing a lot of mobile testing. At the max, we might be having somewhere around 7 to 10 devices at our office at, uh, for our project. And with this, you would see that there is just 25% confidence which we can assure that our app is going to work globally in the global market. So this is the biggest challenge. Of course, automation helps us, but automation has its own limitation when it comes to mobile. Uh, we have been using uh, automation for integration testing, unit testing, and so on. But nevertheless, when it comes at the end, manual testing still plays a very important role, especially for something which involves, involves gestures, touch interfaces, and so on. So this still plays a very important role. And we saw many stats. There are a lot of apps, a lot of devices, configuration, and so on. Uh, having said these, the importance is, what will you do if your app doesn't work? For example, you have just installed, installed Temple Run on your uh, phone, and it's not working. What will you do? You'll just delete it, as simple as that. You'll just drag and drop it and just delete it off. Because there are various competitor apps for the same set of specification which is available, and you won't even really bother to go and complain and, and, uh, and, and take any remedy action. So this is the importance that we get for mobile apps. Uh, now a question, which is the most uh, played mobile, uh, sorry, video game ever? Mario? Candy? Crush? Batman? Angry Birds? OK, yeah? OK. Anything else? Any other answers? Which is the most ever played video game? We have been playing this video game, video game. Just take a video game. OK. The most uh, ever played video game is this, Solitaire. So Solitaire has been played the most in where? Office. So office is the prime location where Solitaire has been played. So uh, let's look a little into what the general gaming scenario is and whether this can uh, be of any use to our own scenarios. The problem right now is we have a lot of devices to test. So that is the biggest problem that we, which we need to tackle. So here we see that most of them are gamers. And almost all the games that you told, uh, be it Minecraft, Sims, uh, Angry Birds. So there are various variation in the games. It can be a sandbox game, a building game, a social game, and so on. So these are the most successful games which have been in the market for a while. And when you look at the statistics, it says that 97% of kids, they play game. And uh, the average game player is around 30 years old. And a little away from the stereotype is even there are 
women uh, game players. So almost everyone in this game, we have played at least one game, either on our phone or on our PC, or it can be any other uh, hand, hand, handy device that we carry. So this has been the scenario. So why not capitalize on something that which we already do with? That has been the whole intent behind why we go for this aspect gamification. Now let's look at some real-time examples where they have gamified. Uh, have anyone seen this uh, game, America's Army? So America's Army is a game whereby it's being used by US Army and they have developed it. And what they do is, uh, before they recruit, they have, they have this game for free, anyone can play. But what is of prime importance here is, it gives an overall feeling of how your job is going to be once you're into the army. Whether you're going to like it or not, you can assess easily out of it. So many people are attracted, as well as many people say that it's not my cup of tea, and they uh, go back after playing this game. So it has been used in real-time scenarios. America's Army is one such successful game. Gold farming, so that was a legitimate part of using gamification. That is also a legitimate part of it. Uh, are you aware of this term, gold farming, by any chance? Okay, what happens in gold farming is, uh, uh, in, in China, in countries uh, in the East, China, Taiwan, and so on, people play game, and they are paid to play game, whereby they reap virtual goods, virtual goods in terms of gold coins and so on. For example, when you are pay, playing Temple Run, you would have accumulated certain amount of gold, right? So similarly, they would be playing various games which are social games, and they would be accumulating these gold, and they would be selling it to people who are willing to pay real money for this virtual goods. So this is a very uh, predominant industry. There are uh, an estimate of 4 lakh people involved in gold farming in China alone. So th that has been the scenario with gold farming. Now let's have a distinguish uh, uh, between what is play and what is a game. Play is anything that what we normally take, uh, for example, uh, as a group of kids when we were young, uh, we, we set our own rules and we said, let's play a game. So that would be play. But when it came to a game, we had certain set of formalities coming into picture. We had a formal system, for example, the recently ended uh, football, you would have seen that there should be equal number of players opposing each other and so on. There are a set of predefined rules which we are going to follow. So that would be a game where it's a formal system with a meaningful uh, meaning given to a particular game. So when we look at gamification, the, distinguish, uh, uh, the difference arises when we have the whole artifact and the partial artifact and uh, how easy it is. For example, toys. It's an artifact which you use for you to play. So it would be uh, partial play and partial uh, artifact which you use for toys. And any of the infographics. We use infographics in our uh, presentations and so on. Even that's a part of game where it's called playful design. And when you have serious games, which are uh, well meticulated formal rules, it's called a game. And when we are in between the partial artifact and a game, this is a gamification. Now, this has been the textbook definition, but uh, just to put it in simple terms, it's a fun way to keep people engaged, whereby we can derive a few of the uh, game dynamics and apply it into our day-to-day -day work. That has been the scenario. Just to understand gamification, what we are going to do is we are going to listen what games can teach us and we are going to learn from the games and uh, most impl importantly, we are going to see if there can be any fun element which we can incorporate in our day-to-day -day activities. So this is from Infosys Research. Uh, what they have done is they have uh, plotted challenge versus skill. So when the skill level is high, when uh, the required skill set is very high, and when the challenge level is high, there arises a flow. So this is a game from Disney where uh, it's called Pirates of the Caribbean. Have anyone played this? Okay, this is a social game, which means that it's present on Facebook, where people can, uh, friends can interact with each other, they can play against each other, similar to Farmville, what you have. So you see that any of the game, uh, be it Temple Run, Angry Birds, or so on, have few elements which are common across all the games. So some of the common elements there could be like 
uh, we have these levels and points. So even in Angry Birds, you have certain levels, and you have some progression bar which is shown to you. And there are a few quests, the challenges which are given to you. For example, you would need to go and chase someone. You get a certain amount of points. So this is the challenge which is laid down to you. And there is resource collection. For example, if you're playing Temple Run, you would see that you're going to accumulate more number of gold coins. So that is resource collection. And uh, you can have any avatars. So avatars uh, where you can uh, become a Spider-Man or you can become a Superman and so on. And uh, you have your own social network where you can form alliance and you can play against each other and you can fight against each other and so on. So these are few of the game elements which are present almost in all games. So this is a social game. So we have most of the social network also into picture. But if it's a standalone game, probably we, may, we might be having most of them, but not all. So we are going to use these concepts. Gamification is where we are going to use these concepts into our day-to-day -day work to make it quite interesting. So when we look at the framework, again from Infosys Research, what they have done is they are using the aesthetic framework of gamification, which involves story, avatar, reward, points, badges, leaderboard, into the day-to-day -day activity whereby they can reward a player based on how he performs it. So few of the examples, uh, this has been used, gamification has been used in Deloitte Consulting, whereby for making an activity which involves uh, people to uh, study online courses, I know it's very boring for us to go through online courses and then get certified in it. So what Deloitte came up with, came up with is this uh, points and badge system, whereby for completion of every course, you would be getting certain amount of badges and you would be progressing across levels. And this would be displayed in your profile which is accessible to the entire company. So this is from Deloitte. And the next example, this is from a company where uh, they are into call centers called virtual ops. So what they have done is, uh, if you're going to make your call as short as possible, because you have to, uh, you have to answer to um, as many number of customers as possible. So they're going to reward you if you're going to keep your call short, as well as your keeping the customer satisfaction to a high level. So as soon as you do that, you are going to get few trophies, and these trophies can later be exchanged for an actual reward. These rewards could, could be in terms of, uh, say, monetary benefits, or it could be in terms of leaves, and so on. So this is the benefit which has been given. And this is an example from FreshBooks. So what these guys do is they give a bad system on uh, as a reward. So for example, if you are early to office every day, they give you an early bird badge, which would be displayed on the internal site, and, uh, and which again can be uh, exchanged for some monetary value or some real-time value. So these are the, uh, for example, you write few blogs, you'll be ex uh, awarded this particular badge, and so on. And uh, IBM, any IBMers? IBM uses gamification. SAP Labs also uses gamification on most of their applications, which they are using on, in their day-to-day -day activity. Apart from this, you would have seen that airlines, most of the airlines now have frequent flyer programs. So for example, you go on SpiceJet, and then uh, as you accrue your, your points, you would be rewarded uh, with a business class for the next ticket that you're going to purchase. So we have frequent flyer programs, again, a sort of gamified aspect. Then what we have is Times of India. So if people are reading Times of India, you would have noticed that as you scroll through in the comments section, now what has happened is they give you this, uh, for every comment that you post, they're giving you virtual badges, they're giving you points, and then they're progressing you across various levels. You might be a beginner level, and then they progress you across various levels. So this is also a gamified part. So as soon as you scroll through the entire page, immediately you, it says at the bottom, two uh, times points accrued. So this is a gamified aspect of uh, keeping people engaged because we get uh, a sense of accomplishment whenever we are rewarded for something, be it virtual. We are not really concerned always about getting some monetary goods always. So even any virtual things helps us. Coding computations. So this has been uh, off late. What has happened is most of the companies are hiring by using this coding computations. For example, TechGig and so on. They, you would have seen that they would send you mailers asking you to participate in a coding competition. And once you clear that, you would be invited for an interview round. So they are using gamification aspect even there. and. 
Another interesting example here is the speeding menace. So you would have seen that there is a traffic cop who uh, waits for you in the road, keeping an interceptor. And when you're speeding up, he stops you. He records your, uh, uh, your speed, and then he charges you with a ticket. This happens normally with traffic cops, right? So uh, this has been followed in almost every country, and India is no exception, where we are also using the same metrics. But what happened in Sweden is, uh, Sweden thought gamific in gamification, what we have is uh, for rather than punishing anyone, for making a task accomplished, why not we reward it as games do? For example, you accomplish a challenge, you are given few points or few virtual goods and so on. So similarly, in uh, for in the traffic rules, if you are following the rules, why not reward you? So what they got is this system whereby they recorded your traffic plate number along with the speed. So if you are driving within uh, the regulated speed, you are automatically entered into the lucky dip. And uh, at a certain frequency, they are going to reward you uh, out of the entire system which has been collected. After implementing the system, the average speed, it's definitely very less than India. It's around 35 kilometer per hour. It reduced to 27 kilometer odd, odd per hour. So which means that this system really works. Uh, people are motivated by rewards when they are going to get it. So these are few of the examples. Uh, another game uh, called Game of Thrones. So again, a social game, which is there on uh, Facebook. What is interesting to note is, again, we have the same game dynamics. We have avatars. We have the progress bar. We have the quest, the challenges which are given to you, and so on. So using this, uh, even sev several companies, you have seen Dropbox. What Dropbox has done is they have given you several quests, several challenges like this. So when you are going to sign into Dropbox, you get certain points. And once you accomplish this, it is completed and you are rewarded 